Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I hope all is well with you all. And this video is about the flow of a vector field. So the flow of a vector field is a concept in differential geometry and dynamical systems that describes how points in a space move under the influence of a given vector field. So a vector field is a map assigning a velocity vector to each point in space. The flow represents the trajectories or paths that particles would follow if they were carried along by these vectors over time. This continuous movement, governed by differential equations, allows us to visualise and analyse the evolution of various systems, from fluid dynamics to the orbits of celestial bodies. So let's go to the details now. All right. Uh, perhaps I can hide that. All right, so the flow of a vector field is a concept in differential geometry that describes how points in a space move under the influence of the vector field. So the idea is essential for understanding the behaviour of dynamical systems, differential equations, and the geometric properties of manifolds. Now, a vector field on a manifold assigns a vector to each point on the manifold. I'll show you a diagram of that shortly. And the flow of this vector field describes a continuous movement of points along the directions specified by these vectors. As I said, I'll show you a diagram just in a moment. Essentially, you can imagine the flow as particles moving through the space with their velocities given by the vector field. A bit like in a river, you have a little uh, particle, like a little floating rubber duck or something on the surface of the river, and it just follows the flow lines of the river. All right. So a diagram here, here's your flow lines in red. These vectors are tangent to the flow lines. So at every point in this space, if you like, two-dimensional space you have a vector because um, at each point there's a vector because there's a vector field on this space uh, and if you can imagine particles like little rubber duck on the river there and at each point here's the rubber duck at the point p it has a velocity vector pointing this way the flow lines are going this way and the vectors point different directions at each point on the flow lines all right, so that's the idea. So the vectors are tangent to the flow lines. Here are the flow lines. And we can find these flow lines by solving some differential equations. I'll be going through that as an example in this video. The individual flow lines are given by these equations for some parameter lambda. In this, uh, in the demonstration I'll use in this video, the parameter will be time. So it'll be x as a function of time. We'll have x of t and y of t because we're in two dimensions. All right, so I can put that back now. Uh, so we have, moving that slightly, let m be a manifold and x a vector field on m. And the flow of the vector field x is a one parameter family of diffeomorphisms, phi t that map the manifold to itself as a function that maps from the manifold to the manifold, where t is a real number representing time. So a diffeomorphism is a map between manifolds, which is differentiable and has a differentiable inverse. Now for each point belongs to the manifold M, the flow line or trajectory of P is given by phi T of P. All right. Properties of the flow, initial condition at time T equals zero, the flow does nothing. So phi zero of P is equal to P at point P. Um, the tangency condition, the velocity of the flow at each point P is given by the vector field X. I'll say velocity inverted commas um, is just the tangent vector. It's mathematically d dt phi t of P, evaluate t equals zero is XP. All right. And next one, the group property of flow satisfies the composition property. So phi t plus S. Sometime later is 5t composed of 5s. All right, let's move that there. All right, so constructing the flow. So to construct the flow, we solve the system of ordinary differential equations given by d dt phi t of p is x of phi t of p uh, with the initial condition that phi 0 of p is p. So we're going to have a look at an example now in two-dimensional Euclidean space. So here's the flow of a vector field on R2. So let's consider a simple vector field x is y minus x. Okay, on the Euclidean plane R2, notice the y component is the negative of the x and the x component is y, the y value. Okay, uh, and that'll affect the direction. You'll see this. 
when I show you the diagram later. So this vector field represents rotation about the origin. Um, you'll be able to see that at different points. Like for instance, if you take x is plus two in the y direction, you're going to have a vector of two units in the negative y direction and um, y value of zero at that point. Uh, so you'll have zero here in the x component. Um, now the differential equations for the flow are, um, here we go, yep, that's better. Uh, yeah, I can fit that in there. So this gives, oh, whoops, I've done it again. I've jumped a bit too quickly, sorry about that. Okay, so the equations are dx dt is y, and dy dt is minus x. Can I just say here, dx dt is y, and dy dt is minus x. That's how that came about, okay? Remember, this is the x component, this is the y component, your vector field. So x is, um, dx dt is y, dy dt is minus x. Okay, so we differentiate the first equation. Um, d dt of dx dt on both sides, d dt gives us d2x dt squared is dy dt. And okay, and then from there we can substitute in the second equation um, d2 dx. Remember, dy dt is minus x, so we put that in there. And that gives us the equation that we need to solve for this system is d2x dt squared plus x is zero. Okay, we're going to have solutions of the form x equals c e to lambda t. All right, so if we differentiate this twice, dx dt is lambda c e to lambda t, and differentiating again will give us dx2, d2x, sorry, dt squared will give us c times lambda squared e to lambda t. So put that in there, then substitute that in there. So this gives us our characteristic equation in here solution of which is lambda is plus or minus i. So the solutions have the form x of t is e to the i t and x of t is e to the minus t. All right. And uh, this gives us x of t is this object. So a linear combination of solutions is also a solution. Do I need to move that out of the way? Yes, move that out of the way. Okay, now Euler's equation. We can write e to the i t as cos t plus i sine t, e to the minus i t as cos t minus i sine t. Okay, let's combine the constants, c plus d times cos t, plus the uh, imaginary number i, c minus d sine t. Now, we can write that as a general solution, x of t is a cos t plus b sine t. The constants a and b are arbitrary. And if x of t is real, then so are the constants a and b. So a is c plus d, b is i times c minus d. Okay, um, now the constants a and b are determined by initial conditions, but they're both arbitrary, and so if x of t is real, then so are the constants. All right. uh, to find the other solution, then remember we needed that's x of t, we also need the other one, y of t, in two dimensions here. Um, remember the y of t was dx dt. Okay, is minus a sine t plus b cos t. All you need to do is just differentiate this. You get minus a sine t and b cos t. Okay, next thing is we need to find the initial condition. So the initial conditions at zero is equal to some initial value x zero and y of zero is y zero. We don't know what those are. Uh, <clears throat> we can specify them later. All right, there we go. Now, <clears throat> Move this again. So taking each in turn, x of zero is a cos zero plus b sine zero. Well, sine of zero is zero, so we're left with a, so it implies a is x zero. Y of zero is minus a sine zero, all right, um, which is zero drops out. Cos of zero is one, so we're left with b, so b is y zero. So substituting these in, we have x of t. There's our general solution there. Okay, now the flow lines of the vector field are given by, of this vector field, the flow lines are given by, because remember we need the tangent to these, so dx dt is dy dt, uh, so x equals dy dt, and um, y equals minus dx dt here, 
And so we have x of t is this object, y of t is this object here. Now you can see these equations describe circular motion around the origin as expected for this vector field. Uh, so the flow of the vector field here, this vector field here, the flow of it uh, is, I better hide that, is this object here. So you can see at each point you have a vector and you can see like for instance if I take x is 1 here, if I put x is 1, y is 0, 0 here and, uh, and I put uh, x is 1 in here, I get a vector pointing one unit in the minus y direction. Okay, now uh, in more general settings, such as on a curved manifold, the construction of the flow involves solving similar differential equations, but the underlying space and the vector fields can be more complex. But we still solve the differential equations. All right, now the solutions describe our points move along curves that are tangent to their vector field at every point, so circles in our case, the flow lines with the red ones uh, on the previous diagram. We'll go back here, the flow lines are the red ones, and here's your vectors at each point. It's a vector field. Okay, now applications. Dynamical systems. The flow describes the evolution of systems over time, such as the motion of planets, the behavior of fluids, or the changes in population dynamics. Geometry. The flow of vector fields is used to study geometric properties on manifolds, such as curvature and topology. And in physics in general, relative to the flow of vector fields, are the killing vector fields, this helps describe symmetries and conserve quantities in space time. All right. So what you need to remember on the manifold, you have a vector field, right? At that vector field, you have um, flow lines and tangent to the flow lines at each point on the flow lines is a vector, okay, which is your vector field. Right, so conclusion, the flow of a vector field is a powerful concept that helps visualize and analyze the movement and change induced by the vector field on a manifold. And it provides a bridge between the abstract mathematical description of vector fields and their tangible impact on the geometry and dynamics of spaces. All right, I hope that's okay for everyone. Um, I hope that's helpful. And uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.